My name is Nader Hagigipur. I'm a professor of astronomy at the Institute for Astronomy, University of Hawaii, and also uh, a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute. My research is about uh, understanding the formation, characterization, and dynamical evolution of habitable planets in our solar system and in the extrasolar planets. Uh, I try to understand how Earth formed, how water came about, and then apply that to other extrasolar planetary systems to understand um, how habitable planets around other stars come about and what to look for when we want to identify their habitability. I also try to understand um, the formation and characterization of uh, planetary systems that have more than one sun. Uh, planets in binary star systems, either uh, planet around one star of the binary or the planet going around the entire binary system. I try to discover them, I try to understand how they form, um, what is the dynamical evolution, and also try to understand whether they could be habitable, and if they are habitable, how to detect the signature of life on them. I work with a variety of different groups uh, in, uh, for, for my work on um, planet formation. Uh, I work directly with my colleagues uh, in Germany and uh, in uh, uh, University of Vienna. Um, we work together to understand the um, collision of objects and uh, understand how these collisions result into accretion and growth of the bodies. And uh, in regard to extrasolar planets and planets in binaries, I work uh, directly with my colleagues at San Diego State University and also at Goddard Flight Center in Washington, D.C., uh, where we uh, analyze data from Kepler mission and also from TESS telescope uh, to uh, identify eclipsing binaries and then use that to identify uh, planets around those binary systems. The launch of uh, JWST, James Webb Telescope, uh, is of utmost importance to the research that I do. And the reason for it is the following. During the past 20, 25 years, um, our team have been able to identify uh, planets that could be potentially habitable. Two of those planets were actually discovered here uh, in Hawaii using Keck telescopes. Uh, one planet is Gliese 581G, and the other one is Gliese 677CC. These two planets are slightly bigger than Earth, uh, however, they are exactly in the habitable zone of their star. And uh, if they maintain water on the surface and if they maintain the right atmosphere, they could potentially be habitable. Uh, what JWST does for us is that it could use these two as two of its targets and look towards these two planets and uh, given its uh, sensitivity and its uh, being a big telescope, it will be able to identify the signature of water molecules in the atmospheres of these planets. If, if there is uh, water molecules, JWST will certainly be able to identify those uh, signatures of those water molecules. And uh, just with that, we'll be able to say whether those planets uh, have the potential to become habitable or to be habitable or not. Whether JWST has already decided where to look for to identify the signature of life has not been uh, uh, finalized yet. You know, so far what has been done is that JWST went on its orbit, settled in the orbit, opened up uh, the panels and sent the first light showing that it actually works. Now what, what's going to happen next is that as engineers go through all the process to make sure that the, the telescope is stable and is producing the result, reliable result and data, then comes uh, astronomers and that they will be the ones that, that they're going to use the time on JWST to uh, search for um, signatures of whatever they want to do around, the, around different stars uh, and, uh, or different galaxies, whatever they want to look at. So point being, uh, there will be a time, uh, after all this engineering and everything is done, there will be a time that uh, the time of the telescope will be open to astronomers and astronomers can apply for time to look into specific targets. And once that becomes available, uh, these two stars, uh, or these two planets, are, are two, uh, two of the targets that uh, we are planning to look into. Water uh, would be a good tracer for possibility of life, but the JWST will be able to identify other um, components as well, CO2, CH4, uh, uh, like carbon dioxide and uh, methane gas. Uh, methane gas would be a better indi uh, indicator of uh, life as well, because if life uh, similar to Earth life exists on a planet, another planet, 
um, that CH4 is, uh, is, a, uh, is one of those byproducts that will certainly exist. CO2 is because of the internal um, uh, dynamics of the planet. CH4 is because of uh, uh, living uh, entities. Uh, it is, CH4 is produced by living bodies, not necessarily us, but by animals and others. So living entity, entities that actually live on the surface of the planet will produce nothing gas. And that will be, not only will tell us that the planet is habitable, it also tell us about the possibility of uh, the type of methane producer um, organisms or entities on the surface of the planet. At the moment, there is no set time that when uh, the time on JWST will be available. And uh, uh, what we know is that uh, the telescope is working, uh, that it is still uh, in its orbit and everything, but when uh, the telescope will be available, similar to Hubble, when it will be available that we can actually write proposals, get time on it, and uh, give the targets to it, uh, still not determined. Once the targets are identified, then uh, um, soon um, the telescope will be able to capture what... Mo of course, there is, there is also noise, so it's not going to be that with one shot you get what you want. You have to identify the noise and uh, how long you need the telescope to sit on the target and all that. So all that process will go through, and, uh, but we are hoping, and uh, uh, what is for sure is that it will be faster than what Hubble has been doing. First results were absolutely fantastic, and uh, uh, the, the, when you put them next to Hubble, Hubble uh, was uh, the masterpiece when it went up there and produced all these detailed um, figures and, and uh, photos of uh, what uh, gr uh, ground-based telescopes were struggling to identify. And now JWST goes up there with much higher resolution and de determines and identifies details within Hubble uh, pictures that Hubble was not able. So it is much, much, much better. And uh, when, but but it's not unexpected. This is what it's supposed to do. It was supposed to go up there and uh, produce uh, uh, photos and um, and pictures uh, much more uh, with much higher resolution and much crisper than than Hubble. And he succeeded to that. So when we got those, we we're like, yes, that's exactly one. One billion dollars is supposed to do for you, you know, and, and uh, that was uh, the huge success and uh, made the entire astronomy community happy. All data that are gathered by um, any space-based uh, or ground-based telescope, they are all archived and they are available to uh, public as well as astronomers. It depends on the type of the telescope. Some telescopes open it to public, some telescopes uh, keep that available to astronomers for a certain number of years and then open to public. But uh, in general, all data that are gathered by any telescope, they're all available to uh, the astronomers, to scientists, and general public for, um, for the uh, analysis. JWST will be like that as well. Uh, but how long uh, the data will stay before it is released to public, um, I still don't have a good handle on that. But uh, given that um, any telescope, including JWST, they are all supported by taxpayers' money, that data will actually go back to taxpayers, even if they are not astronomers. My direct students um, or postdocs that work with me, they may not be able to, or they may not be, you know, the field may not get them into using JWST, but um, I have a strong feeling that once you get to the field of uh, habitable planet formation, planetary formation, all that, uh, you will be, eventually you will be working with people who use JWST to uh, produce data that would be useful to your model. Receiving all the data from, um, from a big telescope like this and then processing that and then get the science that you want, that is an industry by itself and many people get their PhDs on that. Um, uh, same thing happened with Kepler. When Kepler, the data uh, started coming, uh, there was a large group of people that their job was only to receive raw data, process that, identify light curves, and archive them so um, scientists could use them. And same thing with JWST. There is a large, uh, uh, there's a large team of astronomers and data miners and data processors uh, and engineers whose job is to get the raw data and uh, uh, process that in a way that astronomers will be able to use them. So, uh, like I said, it's, a, it's one industry entirely by itself. Uh, people get PhDs and postdocs in it, and uh, you know, they get position, permanent positions in there. And most of those positions are associated with places that support the telescope, like, for instance, NASA. 
and uh, all their job is to just receive the data and process it. So it is difficult, but because the expertise is that we rely on them 100% and we know that what we get from them uh, is exactly what comes out of the telescope. Hubble was supposed to go up there only for five years and has been there for almost 30 years and there is no end to it. It's going and going, right? So um, if Hubble was doing that and uh, uh, JWST being uh, much more advanced both technically and um, um, as far as resolution, um, we are uh, in for a long haul, you know, the, I'm hoping that for next 25-30 years we'll be able to get the very good, uh, useful results from JWST. JWST not only will give us clues to the origin of the universe, how the universe formed, will also tell us more about extrasolar planets. So when the field of extrasolar planets started 25 years ago, we were limited to ground-based telescopes, and most of the observations were done either um, at the Geneva Observatory or here in Hawaii using the Keck Telescope or in um, um, California uh, using Lick Observatory. These were the biggest telescopes at that time. And when um, Kepler went up in the space after that test, the, the number of the discovered planets became so large that the field, in a very really short time, the field went through a huge, fast pace of progression and became one of the most subtle and uh, uh, progressive field of science, not only astronomy. Now extend that to JWST. What JWST is going to do with astronomy is that it's going to provide so much data that what Kepler did to planetary science is gonna, JWST is going to do to galaxy astronomy, star, stellar astronomy, there's going to do the cosmology and to extrasolar planets. So we're going to, we are going to see huge advances uh, in all fields of astronomy and especially in the origin of um, planetary systems, origin of the universe uh, in a very short time. And that is uh, what I'm very much looking forward to. Mm -hmm.